Right, we just finished with the first of the Harker samples. Let's go to the second. Start, the three dots, and it's that second one here. It's Yaka Haka AO3. Loading this by clicking on there. The structure again isn't solved, so the first thing we need to do is solve it. I'm going to use Shell XT and it solves the structure pretty much straightforward. All the atoms have been found and atom types have been assigned. So the first thing, type refine to see what happens. And we can also press that button, of course. So this all looks pretty good and we can already see all the hydrogen positions here. So all these um, Q peaks here, or we can press the map, control M. This is a keyboard shortcut. <laughs> you just need to know, hide the map, uh, control M again. Make them anisotropic and then add the hydrogens to it. So that looks pretty good and it's pretty fast and we get a you know, good structure quite quickly. But let's check it. Control M clearly shows us there's a problem. So this thing here is not an oxygen. So this must be lighter. It's red. So there's got to be less free electrons assigned here. So let's delete that hydrogen again. Control M to get rid of that, mm, that, mm, that, that map and make this a nitrogen, the next lighter thing. And let's refine that. And that looks much better in terms of the size of the ADP. And of course, the R factor looks better and we can see it's an NH2. So H add will add that as a problem. It adds three hydrogen. So all X2 doesn't get it right. It doesn't think there's two, there's three. So control M now, we can see the, the wrong one. So this is the hydrogen is now the red one. So we can just draw shift in the left mouse, uh, this rectangle, and then refine this. The problem is that now the restraints, so the constrained hydrogens are probably no longer taken. So if I go cell minus L, I select the two bonds, cell minus L, I can see the distances are quite different. So in this sort of case, I would actually recommend adding these hydrogens differently. H add minus R. So they're not constrained as riding, but they actually put in as a restrained hydrogen. Um, again, we're getting three of them. Olix2 still gets that wrong, but now we can just delete one of them. That's the one at the back that we don't want, and the restraints are still in place for the others. So this should be finding quite well to something reasonable. So 4.56 and Control m should be quite clean. And it is. Another problem, of course, is this one down here. So here it assumed this is like an sp2 uh, hybridized one because that bond's quite short. But really, it's 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 a tetrahedral um, uh, amine here. So it's it's got the hydrogen over here, not here. And I I suggest what we do here is to um, just refine it completely freely. So I just select this and make it a hydrogen just by clicking on it. So that makes it a hydrogen and just see whether it refines freely. Of course, that takes more parameters because X, Y, Z and the U is refined independently. So the battery, but it's quite full. So we've got a lot of um, data here. So the parameters don't run out. So Control M now gives us a very clean structure. So what's going on here? We've got a hydrogen on that carboxylate, but let's have a look at the distances. That's 1.23 and that one is 1.31. So that's clearly the protonated acid and not the, um, the, not the carboxylate. So we've got no charge here, no charge here, no charge here. So nothing here is charged. So that's, that's good. So all we need to do to finish this is refine a few more times. And we can, of course, well, it's done. But we could type refine <coughs> four cycles and, and let's do 12 cycles. And we want to see the number of peaks is fine. So let's just say we want to see five peaks, but we're already seeing that. Um, it stops. All to refine stops when it's settled. Let's just check over here. So this is nice and straight. And we, um, let's see whether we've got the waiting scheme on. We haven't got the waiting scheme on yet. So we need to switch the waiting scheme on and also ACTA, of course, to get a SIF file in the end. So let's just refine this with the waiting scheme on and it's all settled and it's all fine. Of course, we could go one step further here. Um, this is an independent atom model refinement where we're using tabulated form factors, but we could use 
uh, non-spherical form factors and that's all built into Olex too. So you click on Nosferatu here and select a generator for your molecular wave function calculation and I've got Orca 5 installed here. So you need to do this and find out how it works. See this, it's on the website and there's some, some videos. And then we select some options. And the first thing I would do here is just a standard test. I just click on the test. That's a very quick, cheap calculation that's done and just hit refine. So this is now calculating the form factors based on this structure. So you don't use tabulated form factors. It's not as fast, so this takes some time. And if you do a really expensive calculation, it can take a little longer. You notice that these hydrogen atoms have become anisotropically refined because we can do that. You don't have to do that, but the default is there's a tick box here, which you need to untick if you don't want that to happen. But as you can see, the hydrogens refine quite reasonably. Um, anisotropically, the battery is still reasonably full, nine data parameter ratio. And now these hydrogens, now we need to do it again because now we have a new model. The hydrogen atoms moved out. They're now actually in their neutron positions. That is the real positions where they are. Um, so we need to update that table. And just for this demo, I'm going to go for the second set. So we take the work settings. We're taking more expensive basis set. And we're only doing it once as well. But really what you want to do is go then to final and, and, and repeat the calculation until it's all completely settled. So that's that's the idea to, to get these form vectors right. So we are not using any more parameters than we have in the independent atom model, except the form vectors are now calculated specifically for each atom. So this carbon has got a different form factor to this carbon because it's bound differently and we're taking the bonds into account. So the residual density map should have or will have very few residuals. They're going to be very, very low residuals. Um, we have the positions of the hydrogen atoms correct. We've got much lower R factors. So control M, it's, it's hardly any residuals left at all here. So it's, it's really very clean. And we can also look at things like the deformation density, which is the difference between the independent atom model, like the standard refinement and the non spherical form vector refinement and we can effectively visualize where these orbitals are so we can we can see what the independent atom model hasn't taken into account that these non spherical form vectors now do take into account so this is a really nice way of doing this this is all live here so this is just a standard desktop computer and it can be done even you know for a molecule of this nature and it might give you some more information about your structure that you might not get with just the independent atom model. And also, because now all the hydrogen atoms are refined freely, they're in their real positions. They are where the neutron the experiment would find them. They're not restrained or constrained. So these distances and the relative, you know, where they are, the position of these hydrogens is now no longer in question. So we know this uh, for sure. Thanks for using Olix too.